I have a hard time not thinking about things. So, uh, uh, so when I'm working on a project, that's part of what really interests me is it's always in the back of my mind, sort of nagging at me. If we're working on something and I can't tell you how many times I've woken up at two in the morning going, I know I'm going to do that. I started off working in movie theaters when I was 15 years old. So uh, uh, I'd always been fascinated by photography, 35 millimeter film, which was pretty much all there was around the time. My dad always had cameras around and little movie cameras and so on. Uh, and I was that kid in class who like always wanted to, wanted to run the 16 millimeter projector and that whole thing. Uh, so a friend of mine was working in a local movie theater and I was going to pick him up one day and the, uh, and the manager and I started talking. She said, well, how'd you like to work here? I said, that'd be great. I don't know of any other industry where you have unionized scientific artists. Now, it's a really strange overlap of business and science and artistry. And that's part of the thing that draws me to it. Um, uh, I've done a little bit of everything. I've mixed feature films. I have edited, I've edited music. I've been an engineer. I've recorded ADR and Foley. And, uh, and I always kind of fall back to the engineering. It's the part that really interests me. I, I love the tools. I like taking on that part of the job. So one of our demo pieces for DTS is called Out of the Box. So it's literally a one minute logo trailer that we play. It's on all of our demo discs. It's uh, We have cinema trailers for it. Uh, we have it in every format DTS makes. And it was designed to work in any sound system and to really show off a sound system. One of the things I did in the trailer was I designed a lot of the little meteors or fireflies or whatever they might be that are going through the room. And uh, uh, I really enjoy thinking about how tools actually work. You know, not the way they're normally used, but what's inside of them, what makes that tool tick. Um, and I've always loved the idea of convolution reverbs and impulse responses. Basically, you can take an impulse response of a room and play through a convolution reverb, and essentially anything you play through that reverb will sound like the room you took the impulse response of. There's a lot of good convolution reverbs out there. Uh, I was using TL Space, there's Altiverb, there are a number from uh, various companies, Waves and others that do very similar things. Um, uh, and a lot of them have good little demo pieces that are, uh, not necessarily just straight room reverbs. So I took that as some inspiration and started playing around with just using my own voice to create these little impulse responses. So one of the things I did was um, recorded myself at 192K, um, making just really tiny short sounds uh, and then playing them back at 48K so that they were four times longer. Um, and now you get this really interesting envelope of different mouth sounds and clicks and pops and so on that now are much more elongated and then you loop those so that you have this sort of repeating envelope. Um, then uh, once I had this convolution that I could play things through, I was playing around with different sounds, including my voice, other people's voices, uh, uh, tones, musical instruments, things like that, to create these little repeating things that kind of sound like either motorboats or, or a propeller or something like that. So you have these little movements in the sound that allow your ear to localize much better where it's coming from in space. And that's how we made a lot of those. And then of course, once I created long streams of them and like add a little variation to them, uh, then adding a Doppler so you get an idea for movement in space. And that's how we created those little fireflies and out of the box.